Yeah, I finished. The dinner finished early. My bad, y'all. You good? Yeah. How dare you eat? How dare you consume sustenance? I know. Consuming I early. Cons God, the audacity, y'all. Consumption of one's I mean, soul. That's bold. Oh, also cheers if anyone's drinking. It's sure. been a hell of a fucking week for me, so. Lachaim. Some high quality uh, H2O over here. I I yes, am drink that water. A doers, but a Caribbean yes. rum finish. It's nice. delicious. It's hella mild. You love to love it. I feel like Doors has been like my default because it's the most like easy going cheap whiskey there is. I can't help but experiment and try these other new ones. Can't help but experiment. Yeah, I can't Title help but experiment. Title of my autobiography. It's like, it's like, look at that beautiful bottle. I bet it fucking tastes delicious. Let me go. Do I got Do the that. Let me shoot my Judge a bottle by its cover. <laughs> I do. I actually do that literally. When I decided I was going to go pick up a bottle of wine, my thing is, let me find the quirkiest fucking label possible. And then I pick that one usually. As long as I, it's under like 10 bucks. Yeah, I was going to say, I do a kind of cross-section between quirky label and cheap. Exactly. Like, I go to Wegmans and the wine there is like 6 bucks. <laughs> Wegmans. Oh. It, it's like great. The Wegmans wine do be hitting. I it wish does. that the Trader Joe's here had wine because where I'm from, the Trader oh, Joe's no. have has a wine section. How does the New York one? The New York one was great. It had such a fantastic selection. It was humongous. It was great. Which, wait, which one in New York has a wine section? Uh, 14th Street does. Yeah, like right outside of Union and, Square. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. And downtown Brooklyn. Oh, that one. The downtown yeah, yeah, Brooklyn yeah. one by Decal has one in there, I think. Yeah, man. They, they, no, they, I know. I know Decal might have like a beer section, but I, I'm pretty sure their wine is usually just the Seco. Because yeah, I used oh, to go no, to that no. one a lot. Union Square is like has a the whole on wine store. They have such a great selection. It's super fucking cheap. And yeah. the workers there, from what I recall, were very nice, and they're they're just trying to get you drunk, man. <laughs> and they yeah. do job well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to the Union Square one, actually. Really, that was the first one I ever went to. Well, like Andy works at one, so I typically just go to that one. I see.
I'm about to go full draft horse. Oh god. What does that even mean? I've seen that video, don't do that. <laughs> no, no! <laughs> not Mr. Hands, oh. No, god. not Mr. Hands. Rip. For him, it sends for rest in fucking pieces. Heyo. Come on, give me that temple of light. <laughs> Let me grab my drink and then we'll kick this bitch off. <laughs> Oh my god, YouTube Premium now has a student plan. God is real. It's seven dollars. Awesome. What's the point of YouTube Premium? They keep no ads. The being able to download and being able to play stuff in the background on mobile is nice. But there's, if you don't use YouTube every day, it's not. Like, YouTube is my primary music source, so I have, like, a family plan, so my, mine costs, like, you know, I pay, like, a dollar a month towards it, because there are, like, five people in the plan. Meh. Yeah, it, it's, it's not for everybody. It's very much for, like, people that use it all the time. Yeah, like, my primary source of stimulation whenever I'm performing any activity is put on a YouTube video. And if I if I didn't have it, it would drain the shit out of my battery. Which is kind of, like, fucked up. They should just let us play in the background. But, oh well. Once upon a time, it loaded the whole video at once, and... You could watch all of that on the train or something. Back in the day, it could look. We not, we not beat for it. Any mo. So. Last time. On Ashes of Ultra. <gasps> After spending oh, yeah, a... Before we ended, right? Yeah. So, after a great portion of time between sessions here, you finally had dealt with the Water Elemental and gone back to speak with the Merid, and also informed the Water Elves, along with the Storm Giants, that the Water Elemental that was the original Guardian would no longer be threatening the township of Sekador. At this great but benevolent news, uh, unbeknownst to them on the initial part of the elemental did not return to the plane of water they had agreed to escort you to the merit's home it was at this point after passing through the main hold that you had seen that there was the various water scorpions as well as a strange merfolk that had horse heads as far as you could tell though they seem to be the keepers of the animals, along with a few other denizens that resided within these holds as a main forefront of guarding the old keep, along with the fact that these were ancient storm giant runes that had been lived within and set and dedicated to almost a primary vault to contain the rune stone and the items that are there within. After passing by with the, well, as far as you can tell, somewhat king and queen of the sea elves that had been the main representatives for them, kind of like a mon monarchy, but more of elders, had some sort of enchantment along with them as they passed down the hall, and it prevented the stone that was producing lightning to stave off its magic for a time and allow you to pass without harm. Fe feeling that even the waters were pushing against you, you finally made your way into the Grand Audience Chamber, 
seeing multiple water myrmidons that had been made ready in case there was any attempt or action against the Marin, especially for forceful taking of the stone. After some well-worded delegation and discussions between the Marin, Merit and the rest of the party. He agreed to hand over the stone, especially after the inquiry of Ramus's arm and, well, the intentions of the party thus whole. Which at that point was carefully danced around for why the elemental was not returned, but you could see that he did have pure intentions, even if some was quite estranged. It was at that point that he had handed over the stone and the sword to match along with the blue, blue runestone of Lapis Lazuli. At that point, Modar had enough time to sit there and, well, meditate with the weapon, attuned to it, and become one with the elemental properties there within. At the same, same point, the Meridnatus would take time to attempt to help Ramus as best as he can by adding almost a controlled flow of magic now that his arm was there but not entirely his own to be able to at least take control of it back without issue after what had hap happened unfortunately with Nira now having draconic wings wait so can I take those away? no oh alright uh, with the situation at Hen already played out, Remus had spent a great deal of time, obviously, keeping the Cyberex at bay, realizing that he was trying to leak out fully, and it started reaching out without permission and trying to alter. Now having a better and tighter grip on the said Rudenstones, as well as an understanding of some of the weaponry that you have. You now have finally time to head towards Shishupaniki, last known location of not only Pelgrim, the main antagonizing army of one of the provinces, as well as the Wait, aren't we aren't we going to see Daddy Delacroix first? He is in Shishupaniki. Oh okay, right, 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 okay. And with uh that also that's right. <clears throat> the also last known location of the Rapier of the Yellow King. Yikes. So? That... So we have the blue weapon and sword, so I'm taking that off the quest list. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. Check your shit off. Josh? Yes. How long is the journey to Shishpunik where we're trying to go? Uh, from current standpoint of where you are, uh, it would only be a few days travel, but there is also the other question of where would you want to touch down, especially since they originally assault assaulted your tavern and clearly know at least a ship that you're driving. Um, let me see, do you guys want me to try and disguise the ship, perhaps? Not sure if I have an illusion spell large enough. Probably a good idea. Do we, how far is, a uh, silver runestone mage? Uh, Very. Opposite direction, completely. Damn it. Did we? I don't remember if it was him or before, but didn't we give somebody some stuff to try and make us magical here? Because we had that hammer, and I'm pretty sure you handed it to somebody. I don't remember. Who. I believe that was originally a gift for King Snur. And that's how you got the. Right, right, right. doing so many things yeah I, that that was like 
Are you thinking of the the hammer that Aiden had? Oh no. That we got in the underwater temple. The the adamantine uh, uh, crafting hammer from the giants. Yeah, I believe that went to King Snur. Okay. The last time we were doing magic items, I believe, was in the city when you guys met Modar. Mm -hmm. oh, we do have another adamantine crafting hammer, like Thalos. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm guy. saying. Didn't oh, Thalos has. Oh, yeah. Thalos has it. So if we need to try and do stuff, he has it. But Thalos has not uh, been tr trying to make magic items for us. Well, unless you've been Thalos, are you? Have you been secretly <laughs> whiling away your hours? I've been working on something, but I haven't been working on weapons. If that's, I'm, I'm not that kind of a half dwarf. But I got something. I'm not that kind of half dwarf. <laughs> he doesn't like to forge like all the other boys. <laughs> I'm trying to think because I remember you handed it to a blacksmith in the town. Yeah, we 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 handed for Nira's gear. Yeah, no, you're not right, wrong. We we, we, we got it, it back though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I and I, I know we gave something. I can't remember if it was one of the hammers. We we did, definitely presented one as a gift to King Snur. We gave something to one of the blacksmiths though as payment back for the ore. That allowed us to have audience with Snur in the first place, um, but I can't remember that, exactly. That's so we long ago. Yeah. Like that was level well, like six. Yeah. But we do have one up. hammer right now. Yeah. Thinking of something else, but whatever. It's not on the log. <laughs> the log is life. Log life. Did we lead, lead, did anything with Fravanoth, the, the the dragon? Uh, not that I can think of. I'm just trying to think of like powerful magical people we've visited recently, because we yeah. haven't done a huge amount. Like this is the big thing that we we we're, we're doing, because the last major thing we did was the the green rune stone. Then we went back to the tavern for a, or the bodega for a little while, right. and then. It was fucking around, and we had our had the the Ashton one shot where we went to his town, and then we had the uh, us all getting back together and coming here and fighting the Kraken and shit. So well, unless after... it's somebody in the underwater town, yeah, no. After the Ashton, we had the we had the return to Fravneroth, and that was when those uh right the Silver Dragon Giants, yeah, yeah, they tried to uh, uh wake, wake up the thing. god, yeah, yeah, that would. Ooh. No, baby. That was a little bit iffy. If I had not had a simulacrum there, that would have not been good. Yeah. <laughs> a whole extra person does swing combat. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. It's a busy pop. All right. Well, if we don't have any other stops, then I guess we're going to take the couple days journey towards Shishpanik, yeah? Unless Ashton or... Uh, Ashik, you have anything to say, I guess, about that? Ashton is not here. He gets sucked right. into the wall. <laughs> Probably feeling seasick. And I don't, I don't have anything to say about it. So how much does this little fish genie know about this thing? This big doodle here. <clears throat> well, I know... A significant portion of the power within, as I've had to help tame it before. Though obviously, it is never permanent. When it trades hands, it must be taught all over again. Do I gotta keep the uh, demon to keep the power? Unfortunately, that is what it is drawing upon. Without him, it is questionable whether or not you would be directly connected to the one who originally made it, which is more daunting than just the Sibarix within. Okay. 
right? So it's kind of a uh, a stone in the way a little bit. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the Sivarek stays. Uh, there's something else in there. I can feel it. But how do I reach it? Because I think everybody else before me has tapped into that. That's what's given them. Longevity, I guess. I don't know. I feel it, but I'm not sure. I'm calling upon those who are charged within the... Might be able to lend you power at the time, or even turn the tide of a battle. Though if you leave it out for too long, I would... Possibly try to shake its shackles. Oh, so I can, like, summon things in here from here? Yes. That's cool. Um... Yeah, I got nothing else right now. I'll probably think of something in, like, ten minutes but <laughs> when we're away from here, but I think that's all I gotta ask Alright. Um, Brain wants to know which way is out. The uh, fuck? This way. No need to find Modar, Modar words. I like the tile on Rain's ceiling. Mm -hmm. But we should Thanks. say goodbye before we, like, leave. I give him a cat cat. <laughs> You're like an intricate handshake that only I'm aware of. He would return the gesture in kind, seemingly like knowing the order. And I give him a nice little mirror. Evidence that he's hand. been reading our minds this whole time. Uh, good to know. Uh, <laughs> I saw you yeah, staring I, at my wife, motherfucker. I'll give I you. give it. I give an equally complicated but one-sided bow and hand gesture combo in respect and thank him again for his help. It's ridiculous. Both of my staffs like end up like twisted behind me from my arms being so like crumbled up. God damn. I like how oh. me and Brain have just dipped. <laughs> They're gone. They're out of here. Yeah, we're fucking out. We're out five minutes ago. Shiki is out here smoking a cigarette. You guys got exploded by the runes. You didn't wait for <laughs> King and Queen Zunzarath. I mean, y'all be y'all can handle that. No, you exploded. You set it off because you can't wait. Because you didn't even l listen when Josh said that their magic deactivated the lightning walls. Foolish. I, I would imagine one oh, no. went the but. <laughs> oh no! I mean, I could oh, roll no. the damage for that if you want me to. <laughs> um, it, it just seems, you know. Oh, yeah, you know. There should be consequences for actions. Should there not? Should be. It should be. I'm an adult. I can handle the consequences of my actions. What are they? That's 91 lightning damage. Dead. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Come no. On. You know, <laughs> but that's what would happen. Passing. Isn't that one? Of, isn't that Mercy. one of those times where she would instantly die? Uh, not instantly, but she would definitely drop me. <laughs> you guys couldn't possibly like. I have seventy. They wouldn't. Mercy. I have one hundred and thirty-four. So yeah, it would definitely hurt. Like, oh fuck. Yeah, I wait for- 134 what? HPs? Get the yeah. fuck out, really? Yeah. Yeah, you're a cleric, I... you're- yeah. Your hit I... die is smaller. You should have health, too. Mine is at 87. Wait, how do I- oh, because I have the tough feet. Yeah, I was gonna say, like- Every time I- every time I go, wait, I'm a wizard, how do I- nope, I- I- because I built against it, because I was terrified. How do you only have 87 HP? That's particular poorly, class. I, I don't know. 
Wow, that I want to talk about a shiki. Anyway. I want to talk about a shiki's HP. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, oh god. I'm privy to a shiki's HP, yeah. and it's it's hard to look at. It's pretty for upsetting. A level 13 adventurer. It's 68. Yikes. That's why I said that she'd be dead, because I would have been dead. <laughs> I look forward to the return of it. I'll be sure to keep safeguard over it. Yes, the return. Yes. <laughs> Turn up the key. But that, obviously, easy enough to depart or return to the ship. Decide not to walk all the way through and get fried, maybe. <laughs> Ogan has a last name? We I did not know. We come out and uh, we see Rain and Ashiki smoking corpses. Yeah, this is fucking. And I, <laughs> I pour yeah, a potion of healing over afraid. each of them, and they get up they with fucking five HP each. V, I would picture that we cherry cigarettes and other way for no, everybody to yeah. fuck up. Very like <laughs> you, you, you ask for a drag moment. Or exactly, exactly. Underwater drag. Hell yeah. Yeah, we're blowing okay. bubbles. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a bubble pipe. Oh. Oh, I you guys are yep. take you guys are smoking. I'm wearing a dress. Damn. So we were doing drag. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see it. Fuck. I so have a dress. Modar Do you want to put dress. it on? So At this moment in time. Oh my. Uh, and also, yeah, Polygon's always had a last name. He's fucking. He's a whole being too. Respect yeah. his existence. Polygon Pendleton. I I don't ever remember hearing Pendleton before. I always think just Polygon. He's, no. he's, he's a Pendleton. He's a Pendleton. He is a Pendleton. He's one of the Pendleton brothers? Or is he Wait, my dad? He's a top of the Pendle. North Coast Pendleton? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh god, Fuck yes. Me. So good. So good. Rain's gonna go downstairs and get drunk, guys. Shocker, I know. Uh, before Rain does that, uh, Thalos is going to follow her, and he's going to encourage everyone else to follow her as well. Oh, uh, and she's definitely going to pull up. Pull up to the function on <laughs> the airship. Ramus is going to see if Nera is okay and then do some meditation. Modar and me are there, but they're mostly looking and talking about the sword to each other. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Rain, you walk into a room slide. full of very familiar faces, all of whom look like they care about you and they have something to say. <laughs> oh, Everybody <laughs> pulls out a piece of paper that seems crumpled and handwritten. At time when way. we were all on the ground and bleeding and none of us were healed and you just <laughs> left and kept drinking from the bottle, that hurt my feelings. No, I'm just and that time that we said we were gonna hang out and then you got drunk and then we hung out but you weren't there and it was sad this is an intervention <laughs> we're, we're, no no stories no. in and rain realizes it's an intervention <laughs> she's gonna put her like little canister away like okay i guess this is not the moment to pull out the whiskey that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the time or place got it all right well once everybody settled in thalos just pretty much uh let you know um sorry uh if you wish to uh, you're referring to your, your situation with your father if you wish to talk about it know that we are here and we are ready to listen if you don't wish to talk about it, know that we are here, and we are still with you. But I need you to understand that you are not alone in this. And I do not mean that only in word. 
what your father may I... have done. He may That's have done father. for the best of reasons. I tell you I can relate because this is something I have not had a chance to tell you. I was hoping I could tell both yourself and your brother and Ramus if he'd stuck around, but I understand he has to clap those cheeks. <laughs> Nevertheless. <laughs> I'm meditating. I'm, I've got crazy arm. I'm trying to find out what's going on with crazy arm. <laughs> My mother used to suffer from visions. Visions that I now suffer from. Many, many years ago, she abandoned her tribe in order to find an answer to these visions of the world ending. She did not know where to look, but when she left her tribe, she finally came to the conclusion that she must go into the Underdark to find an answer. No one knows what happened to her there, but we do know seven years, seven months, and seven days. She returned from the Underdark back to her people and gave birth to me. After that, she disappeared, but there are legends that she went about helping all those that she could. That was nearly 60 years ago. Oh, no, it was a little over 60 years ago. She would be dead now. But the question comes to what cost she may have paid in the Underdark in order to obtain the power she needed to help others. I do not know what cost she paid, but I fear she may have made deals, the sort of deals that we are running across now. And if a soul was sacrificed in order to give her the power she needed, I do not know if she sacrificed her own or perhaps mine. For I was conceived in the Underdark, but raised by my grandparents here. I'm not sure, but I think my soul is in the balance. When I first tasted death many months ago when we first met, when the, dove, when the mage Dove Swoop in Nera's original group killed me, when I fell, and when I awoke, I was different. This, I, I, I sort of open uh, my tunic and sort of show off the dragon mark that looks like a dragon's eye over my left pectoral, but uh, has sort of like a flaring of thorns around it that go up over the shoulder and form a full sleeve tattooed along my arm. Is the eye over your nipple? No, it, it's, it's over the entire plate muscle that is that that is there the nipple is somewhere in the thorns if you have to know um <laughs> play find, the saying, she's over playing find the nipple i'm just saying that would have been a cool place to put the eye but um i sort of flare one of my hands up um uh sort of like how i'm able to suddenly do firebolt it's just because i ended up getting aberrant dragon dragon mark but um when i awoke i had these abilities and i've only been getting stronger and I think it may have been the sacrifice that my mother may have made, or may have made of my own soul. So when I say that I understand what you may be going through, understand that I mean it literally. Also, it may not have been my mother's sacrifice, but it was you that brought me back from the dead, Rain. After he killed me, your power, before you identified yourself with Torm, something to consider just know my friend that i am here and i stand with you we're gonna pause and be like holy shit you're 60. three 63 but yes but you're a half elf so you're probably older anyway you and your brother your twin brother you guys are probably like <laughs> I don't know, yeah, like 120 or something? So or... Smooth. Mod Modar <laughs> looks up. So Wait. Smooth. How, how old is... What's the average age here? A what? What's How old is everybody? What's the average age? I'm trying to figure out if I'm old. Ashigi is 21. I mean, generally, if you're, like, going out adventuring or doing hard labor, maybe, like, 30, 40... How old are you? Well, you, never mind. How uh, I look to rain. How, uh, forgive the, the question, but um, you're a half elf. I can't really tell at all. You're not supposed to ask. 
a person their age. Why? Why? It's con- <laughs> it's considered rude in in some places. Is Indeed. this one of those places? Yes. I thought this I, was a safe I, place. Uh, the, and that we were all like... friends here. Ooh. That was what Alice told me to say. We are friends, but at the same time, it is rude to ask someone their age. Uh, uh, Unless, of course, they bring it up themselves. I mean, she asked you how old. She made a joke about how old you were. Yes. I didn't make a joke. It was a damn question. Mind your business, me. That's <laughs> I'm Modar. Modar. Is me is are. over there. Me <laughs> oh, is good. actually oh, only good. a couple days old. Me okay, is me is Modar. How about me, that? Is, <laughs> me is thirteen day. <laughs> oh, uh, me? I'm two hundred and one. Oh. Actually, two hundred and two in a couple of solar uh, cycles. Modar. Modar. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> you look fantastic for 201, Moda. Thank you. Well done. The ancient, I, ancient I, man. I didn't know Modar's skin secrets too. <laughs> Where's the little Alice? <laughs> it's Modar. Comes- I was gonna say it comes from not ever having emotions. I don't get wrinkles. <laughs> no stress. That will, that will actually okay. help. He Yo, also is Nalkin covered secret. constantly in a thin layer of oil. Nalkin Dispassion, hey o. Hey. Ryan's gonna say that she doesn't remember her age anymore. I would like to roll insight. <laughs> Damn. DM, can I? Roll yeah, him. Go, go for it. Roll him. 21. <laughs> Uh, up to you, Rain, whether or not, uh, you... Um, Um, is it true? It's true that I do not remember my age anymore. But I'm not willing to talk about why. I sense that it is true, but that there is more to the story, and I go... (laughs) Exactly. Um... And then I can look, go back to look at the sword. Ray, Rain's gonna tell Dallas, you know, I appreciate the offer, but there's nothing really to share at the moment. I'm discombobulated. And I'm usually feeling more combobulated as we proceed on our journey. Understood. But we are here. Ashiki and Moda, I wanted you to know as well. Because I- if anything should happen, if I should lose myself, I ask you both to do whatever is necessary in order to protect, well, the mission. Don't worry, buddy. We'll put you down like old Yeller. I may check first, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Thalos, you okay? <laughs> I make like a, I, I make like a, 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 a like a salute with the sword and the sheath comes off like a little bit as I flick it and like lightning like crackles throughout the room. It doesn't hurt anybody but everybody's hair is standing on end and as, as I go oh and I sheath it. Excuse me I have like a halo of fur happening. <laughs> Again hairless bald so he's he looks fine. Right. Right. Oh wow like, that really <laughs> oh my and I sheath the sword sorry about that. Ashiki will explain that Old Yeller is a story from her tribe that is about, um, <laughs> that is about just this man who could not stop killing dogs. <laughs> this is where you find out that actually her, she comes from a very violent culture. So this is actually not that far-fetched. <laughs> you could say that she's had a very bizarre adventure. Rain's gonna like pat pat on the shoulder. Pat, pat. Gosh. Only met. We're only all met. Up. Oh, what are wait? Uh, you you're. Damn it! Why can't I remember the name? Uh, what's it? What's the race of of your folks' name again? Not Tengen. Yeah. No. Um. Tenku. Tenku. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I have only met te- two Tenku. One killed me. You are my favorite by far. Hilarious. Let's hope that only one has killed you, and will continue to kill you. 
I'm sorry to, to intr intrude, but uh, Thalos, you you broke the laws of life and death? Not you me. You died, yet you live? I turn back and I, and I look at Rain. It was not me. I was only brought back. It was just, you know, a thing that I thought he needed, and I did, you know, a little thing. It's far back, mm. that's all. And Is that now, a big deal? Well, uh, did someone come looking for the missing soul? I'm just, uh, it's, it seems like uh, he, if he died, then that no? would have been his time. Huh. A thousand, I, who, who I, come? Oh, I mean, it depends on, you know, where the soul was going. Provided I have a soul. I've been Provided you... <laughs> Provided you have... What the that's it. That I, I don't know if you remember, question? but that's what I was... I, I was asking, um... Uh... Nottis last time, whether or not it was possible. Like, whether or not his people dealt in soul exchange but he pretty much said it was all demons work and Thalos really just doesn't you know he doesn't know he, he's kind of afraid that like he either has half his soul or, or his mother sold his soul <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's funny to me but like, that, okay so that's like a backstory thing that, yeah that's that, a backstory okay yeah. okay yeah so definitely Modar is very curious because he didn't know why you would have asked that last night yeah. like you is that question you may not have your soul should that not be looked at we have greater <laughs> things to attend to all that Stop, i know is what I'm is, there soul, is there a soul doctor yeah, i very I quickly check if we have any uh like uh uh bards spirit bards in network for yeah. our um for our fucking in our insurance in our insurance or our health insurance hey, josh do we have a... spirit bards in our network this is in network yeah uh maybe back in onso but not immediately okay. within the town no, no no not 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 here i yeah. mean i'm just saying like is there somebody that we could like we could put that on the quest log get get thalos's soul checked out get him a tarot <laughs> reading or something confirm or deny soul Spirit answer <clears throat> shit, magic -iness. All that I know is, is whatever deal was struck. If my mother is dead, then I alone am the one that bears the cost. Nevertheless, we must be on our way. Rain's gonna pat Dallas on the shoulder and say, you know, you have lots of weights on your shoulder. You seem to just be adding to them more. Someone has to bear the weight. But, as we said to Ramus, it does not have to be you alone. I'm not that strong, but me and I together can lift more than I can alone. Which is why, which is precisely why I shared what I did with all of you. Now you know. Now it does not disappear with me. Well, I would appreciate any guidance that you two have as I work to connect with my stone. And I, like, wave kind of a hand over the sword and, like, lightning reaches out to connect to my hand. But then it, like, flickers and kind of goes out because my connection with it isn't very good yet. You may have greater guidance than I do. I have yet to even utilize my weapon. Rain's gonna think for a second and say, have you just sat with it yet? I I have been doing nothing but that since I got it, actually. Yeah, but have you been thinking about it while you're sitting yeah, there? Yes, actively. I am working as hard as I can to untangle all of the mysteries. Okay, I, I have do the two of my best mind. Have you, have you thought about maybe you just like it. just like sitting with it and not thinking about it? Exactly. I don't understand. Vibing around it. I, yeah. What is... I, do you know what vibing means? Yeah. I mean, yes, that's when we drink and uh, 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 and uh, Rain tells stories and I either say haha or 
uh, for that damn strange. buddy that sucks. Uh, He's depending got the right on the vibe. time. Got the right vibe. Vibe. There's the word. Mm -hmm. Yes. You should sit with very it, hard during that. But not think about the stone. You just need to oh. exist next to it. And leave it to exist next to you. And you'll kind of find your wavelength. And you'll start feeling a connection happening. And you just let it happen organically. Don't demand it. That's what I recommend. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're just being too pushy. Yeah. Don't be pushy. Modar. Or me. Or whoever <laughs> I'm talking to. <laughs> I'm Modar. You're, it's usually me that you're talking to. I can't tell. It's usually me that we're talking to? No, it's you, me, Modar. <laughs> no, do you mean... Okay. We agreed that you would say Modar for you. So why <laughs> did you say me? me? My name is Modar. Yes. Okay, well... You hasn't been made yet. I could make a you. God, don't. Oh, God, no. So you were saying... No, it, uh, Modar was saying. Uh huh. Uh huh. That uh, <laughs> she's just having a panic attack. <laughs> Mom, come pick me up. I'm scared. <laughs> I just I don't know that I know how to just not think. Um, oh wow! You gotta learn how to meditate. I've meditated. But meditation then, is, 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 for at least for Vidalkins, the way we teach it, it's very active, focused thinking and directing of your whoa. thoughts throughout the body. That's just so much. You're just, you're just putting way too much there. Nobody likes pushiness. Don't be pushy. So you're telling me Vidalkins don't actually understand meditation? <laughs> I'll tell you this. Nate also doesn't understand meditation because the times that I've tried... The only time that I ever felt like I was actually getting relaxed, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so. That means it worked. That, see, that's what I said. It's like. But my partner at the time was very upset with me. Uh, it's like, you ever saw um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Have you ever seen that movie? A classic. You remember when he's trying to learn to... Yeah to uh, surf and uh, Paul Rudd keeps telling him to do less exactly. it's kind of like that exactly if you're thinking about Literally. it you're already doing too much yeah just exist next to it and see what happens just be take a moment and just be people are like oh but what if I think too much then you think too much yeah That's what the, the fuck am my gem you have to my gym is attached to my gauntlets, aren't they? <coughs> Which one is it attached to, out of curiosity? Is um, it the left, left one or the right lefty. one? I'm a lefty. lefty? Through and through. So, yeah. Is it I'm a on left the, kind of person. Is it on the front or is it on the top? Like, like, do you hit people with the stone or do you, or is it like in your hand, yeah, no. like Iron Man? Yeah, no. It, it's, it's, it's on the back of my hand. It's safe away from the impact. But it helps to power the impact. It reinforces the hand and adds yes. momentum. And yes. Yeah, nice. Yes. Okay. That's how I picture okay. it. That's how I picture it. So, exists. yeah, I don't, I just exist next to this gauntlet. And the gauntlet just, you know, works with me because I'm not pushy and I am not pressuring it. <laughs> uh, I will, I will take the sword and very gingerly set it in the chair the empty chair next to me like propped up and then i say uh hey can i get you a drink but you don't you don't have to take it if you don't want to that's a yes <laughs> i was talking to this sword oh is that good like not pressuring like just <laughs> no yeah you're doing great if you're trying to date it it's great what i'm confused where i thought we were vibing <laughs> it usually starts with me getting Rain a drink. And Rain's gonna say, on that note, pulls out her <laughs> canister. Rain gets a drink. <laughs> I'm ready, baby. I am ready. <laughs> um, alright, well maybe, maybe I should try this. And Modar pulls out a packet of something. 
and a, and a small blue device. And he pours the something into the blue device and he works it around. It's very clearly a grinder. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. <laughs> and then he hands it to me, who incinerates it in his hands, and then blows it into Modar's face. Shotgun! <laughs> like, Where all right. like, damn, I wish I had a clone. <laughs> I keep offering. To give me He a does clone? nothing but offer clones. <laughs> I, guess, I guess next time. We'll see how that goes. I nod. Rain's just gonna slowly get drunk in the corner now. <laughs> Cries in the corner. Oh, no, don't leave to go to the corner. Ah! Get drunk here. We're no, vibing no. with the I'm sword. Don't. Rain! Ellis is heading up on deck. I need your help to vibe with the sword. Ashiki <sighs> is going to begin to strum her loot. do my best to relax with the sword after I'm abandoned by all my friends. <laughs> you got this. I'm Isn't left with this bird that I barely know. Oh, yep. yeah. Now I... He's trying to help you buy. Bring your cup and join uh, Ramus on the deck. Where's your solo cup? <laughs> and your sword. And... Don't forget to bring the sword. Because I feel like I'd have to say that. <laughs> I, um... I think in the midst of Ashiki playing, Modar makes an excuse of like, Oh, I'm gonna go upstairs to get some air. He's annoyed by the song that you've chosen. It makes It's hard for him to vibe with the song. <laughs> it's too lively for him. He's too much of a nerd to be able to enjoy it. So he will meander up, leaving me to hang out with you. Uh, and Motor will wander up and see Ramus, uh, alone on the deck. Oh, as you go up, Ashiki is going to slowly <laughs> follow behind you with the loot. Playing. Oh, this. Where are you going? Up onto the deck. It gets louder somehow. You're not sure how. She's opened her beak now. Oh, God. <laughs> A jazz band is accompanying me. Oh, oh I, um... Uh... Ashiki, I'll be right back down. You can, I'll be, I'll be right there. Thank you. You, m me wants to listen to it, so you, you just go down and, and play for him. Ashiki will I put away her loot. As, as her mouth is open, playing jazz music, she reaches back and grabs her war drum and begins to beat it. Furiously, oh she no longer can hear Modar if he's speaking. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I will not roleplay then. <laughs> what? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god. So. A loud gong and music combination, and we can. Modar and Ramus have a conversation, and the audience does not hear it. It's like whenever Timmy Turner's dad's name is spoken. It's yeah, fairly the last. <laughs> Except for twenty minutes. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Uh, to the previous question that Ramus asked uh, before vibing on deck, uh, Nira seems to be getting more comfortable with her wings, even though it's still strange nonetheless. As, uh, you know, it's strange suddenly just having wings overall, period. And then, uh, as for Dia, uh, she is just enjoying the breeze in the sky on the front of the ship with the bow spirit. As you are heading in tow towards Shusha uh, Paul Gain, uh, would call out to the rest of you, <laughs> the the musicians are going. <laughs> are we just gonna drive into the city, or are we gonna take another route? We could at least hold up. Perhaps try entering during the night, where it would be the more subtle 
I look to Ramus. Do you think you could use your shadows, maybe, if it was night, to help us? With your new control over the flow? I could try. Maybe I could make a storm? And I kind of look to the sword, like, and I... I, how exactly does the thought tendril, like, trying to think at the sword work? Because I was able to talk to the giant earlier. Uh, through just quick sense, it's more like emotional tells. Uh, spending a moment to meditate with it, as strange as that is, uh, is more of a... Wait, hard for, hard for Modar. Yeah. It's more of a hard focus, but able to get a more direct answer. Okay. I will kind of reach into the sword as much as I can, and with my with my my uh, desire for assistance leading as my forward <sighs> emotion, uh, I, I call out to Lord Lensag, and I ask if the Stormbringer is able to help me summon Thunderclouds when uh, I call him, when I ask him, when I, when I call for his aid. <clears throat> With that... <clears throat> and Rohan answers. <laughs> uh, you would be able to, and on the fact of you would have to drive the sword into the ship to protect it from the storm as well. Right, the this, this, this ship would essentially have to be holding the sword so that it would be safe. Yes. Okay. Unless you wanted to get struck by lightning. I mean, that could that's the contingency, right? Um, Pull it out and just watch everything go <laughs> fucking nuclear. I will, my eyes, which kind of get like cloudy, I clear and I look at Ramus. I say, I think I could do something to help. I could summon storm clouds that should cloak us. And if we are in night, and if you are able to use your shadows, then... It's gotta be dark. Or even uh, kind of dark. Paul Gain, why don't we uh, hold up, uh, say, 15 miles from the town, uh, as high up as we can comfortably be? Alright, I'll be sure to try and keep track of that as we get in uh, the approach. Alright. I haven't been this what time far of inland, so I don't know that landmass too well. Ah, well, in that case, perhaps we wait till night now. What do you think, Ramus? You are more experienced with these lands. I'm still an outsider. Do the Shishu Panik have artillery that would be able to reach us? Is that something I'd know? Uh... Most definitely, especially with the order that has been basically the assembly of the temples that is represented for the king in this providence, that they effectively have even resorted to angelic means to defend the skies if necessary. So yeah, maybe we should either wait or end up a little higher with storm clouds. At least... They don't necessarily need to be raining stormy, but dark enough. Uh, let me see if I can, you know, affect that now. And I'll kind of step towards the middle uh, of the deck. And I take the sword and I'll unsheath it. And the lightning like crackles all around it. And it forms kind of like a halo around him. And I, uh, I look at Ramos and I say, is there... You're the only other one with a sword. This will be my first time wielding it. Anything I should know? Uh, think of it as another person. Alright. Except a really, it's only as reliable as you let it be. If that makes sense to a wizard. Yeah, I mean, in <clears throat> yeah, it's it's the it's that type of like 
wizard magic is the most specific, right? It's all learn it perfectly, memorize it, and then you can do it whenever you want, but you have to do it perfect every time, or else you're gonna fucking explode. Yeah, I'd say with swords with beings in it like that, yeah, it's a great way to explain it. You mess around, you don't know what you're doing, it's no longer you in control, you know? I will nod, and then I will take the sword in both hands, and I will drive it about a foot into the uh, uh, <clears throat> wood of the deck. Uh, and I call for the aid of Lord Flintsag to surround us in storm, in impenetrable storm clouds. So. Especially as you drive the sword straight in. You see what looks like arcs of lightning dance across the deck and quickly encase around the edges of the hull. The clouds like you've seen near Fravanoth's castle immediately start to emanate from it, but a deeper and darker hue. At that point, you can hear the storm start rolling in, almost like a small hurricane has built up immediately underneath you to provide cover it's at this point you realize that the longer this goes on the more area that the storm covers and provides protection obscuring the ship making it difficult to take note of everything down below but Still, just barely enough to make out the land masses and be able to spy what is going on initially down there. Yeah, well, you probably don't even need me now. I, I, you, you say that, and Mordor kind of like, like he, he's like sweating, maintaining this. It's like, I'm not. I mean, easily. Your aid would definitely be appreciated come nightfall. What what time of day is it? Currently, uh, it would be just after uh, debating with not not as right around the three o'clock mark, p.m. I don't know how long you can hold it on. Probably a good idea to get us somewhere. Um, you don't have to. I just imagine it feels crazy being a conduit for power of that scale. Pretty much. It's <clears throat> menacing to say the least as you're holding on with both hands with all your might at the same time as you are channeling this extra power that's being reached through you. You could tell it's almost like one hand of the Storm Kings basically reaching through your body and holding this with you and providing this basically excess energy as you were pretty much a circuit maintaining this for the time that is needed right it's... the sword requires a wielder and the stone needs a focus and i'm both of those things <sighs> yikes especially with certain points as you are traveling it is a definite wonder to behold, as even parts of the ship do get struck by lightning, but are immediately absorbed or pulled back into the sword to protect it. You could tell that if it was not for this thin veil that protects from the lapis stone, it'd probably blow off whole entire sails on the left or right side, or even the front propeller of the ship. Maybe even damage some of the engine room if it were to be struck straight on. With that, I'll gain trust to a, make a quick travel and also descent into a location that slowly starts to drift into mountains at that point as you come, come across the lands. Feels like a few hours of travel by. As Paul Gain is basically pushing the ship as fast as it can to try and take full advantage of what you're doing, Rodar. Many down. Say that last part. Wait. Say that last part again. 
Uh, he's pushing the ship as fast as he can to take advantage of what you're doing with the conduit. I missed her two of the verbs in that sentence. <laughs> My bad. No, no, no. Not your bad at all. I fuzzed. <laughs> it's our expectation that we'll arrive by nightfall, or do we have another day's worth? I just don't want to tap Modar out if we're just, you know, testing the storm function and we're not actually going to cross into the uh, Shishpaniki border. Roll me a survival. Gladly. Now will I make it? Whole other deal. Negative. Uh, judging by the speed and travel, you feel like probably easily make it before the night's out. Hmm. I reference Paul Gain. What does he think? Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, could be further inland. All I know is it's more near the mountains. Should be easily recognized once we get there. And you look out, Thalos, you can see the mountains, especially for how fast you travel. Even though they look small, it could be deceiving. They look... Mm, a little bit like it would be, maybe a day, half a day. Uh, I'd let you roll perception for that, since you've been, all of you've been trekking on the the ship for a while now. First shot, twenty-two. All right, uh, you could tell it would probably take like a day and a half to actually get there, judging by the mountain range. I think we have another day and a half, my friend. And I, I and I say that aloud loud enough for uh, Modar to hear. Are we sure? I, I I thought he said many of the temples would also be armed. Potentially. I, <clears throat> I do not know much about the lands of Shishapuni. Have any of you journeyed across them or, or recognize any of the landscape? Fuck, geography! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Where's where's Aiden? He'd be so helpful for this. <laughs> Ashiki, the bard of Uh yes. Uh any well basically everyone could roll me a history. Uh trying to remember if it would be safe to let out the cl the cloud for now and tell it closer. Actually, Ashiki yeah. have your have your journal. Oh sorry, Aiden. Yes, right? No, I wanted to ask um I can't recall. Do you remember exactly where the Delacroix estate was located at? I feel like my brother had dictated that early on in game. Uh, yes, it would be uh, on the northern section of Otrin and Chushapanikian borders, close to the mountain range. Probably if traveling on horse, a couple weeks ride. So. Okay, from yeah. between Otrin and Chushapaniki? Yeah, the border is there. Okay. Got it. Thank you. But well, let's see. Uh, with some of the history, ironically, tell us once again. <laughs> uh, you would know that the temples on the outer skirts are not as well defended, but they do still have some clergy there. Mm. You would probably need to do it only once you're about maybe half a day close to there so people wouldn't take note of the ship. Okay, I relay that to the, to the rest of the team. Wonderful. Once when I was working as a prostitute in one of these border towns, <laughs> I remember. No, I just said... <laughs> I let that roll right over me, too. I was like, wow, he's a prostitute. Okay. That was, that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, okay. this is a safe space. It's a safe space, but Modar would be shocked. Yeah, it's a safe space. <clears throat> but I Wait do really like, go on. Team. <laughs> go on. Oh my god. Yeah, the most interesting part of that for Thalos is, is the reference ge ge uh, geographically. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking crap. Yes. Uh, so, with that, 
easy enough to make ready and uh, up to Modar whether or not he would want to keep this up for a day and a half. Uh, do I think I could? Not for a day. He, we just, I can, I can attempt to take over when it's dark and we probably will have We could straight take shifts. Try for 12 hour shifts. That seems safer. I would love that. For, for both of our health. All because right. Modar's worried. The description of air cannons and especially heavenly hosts. Uh, he's he's seen defenses like that before. Don't you They're want to, nasty. Yeah, don't you want to fight an angel? Come on. No. <laughs> Zero desire. No I time. ran Descent into Avernus. I know how gnarly some angels get. I Do not. You're absolutely fantastic. All right. Modar has several friends who are angels. He does not need to tangle with one. That does would, it, that could get, that does could it get seem strange? Bad. Like, I mean, Modar, I mean, like, from your perspective, does it seem strange that the Shishipunik, who are known for dealing with demons and, um, and magic, would actually have angelic defenses? Or is that if something they that are. Do? If they're dealing with one, it means that they have the capability to deal with another. Mm. It's one of those, like, the depth, if you, when you reach a certain depth of magic, mm -hmm. everything is kind of, yeah, I'm a level 10 wizard. That means I can kind of reach out to anywhere in the cosmos, really, I want to, and at least poke something there and get a response. So when they, if they could do that with demons, they have people on the opposite end of the spectrum in the same place. So it's so it's that celestial level of magic that mm -hmm. we're just sort of dealing with. Okay, cool. And now we're getting now we see two coin to the other side of the coin. Um, this is the side the side of the coin that he was really hoping that they didn't have though, because this is another thing that reminds him of home. Not the war though, that's no fun. Never had to deal with them. Um. So Thank yeah, Bodar is like hanging the f on. It's like you know the lightning is pulsing on and through him. After a part, after a point, it kind of thrums with the heartbeat of the wind and the cyclone underneath the ship, and all the storm clouds that are constantly swirling. But they give Polgain just enough to be able to see out and see where we're going. Especially following that thrum of magic and the pulse of your heart. Able to push forward, and even in tow later at the night. Switch off to Ramus and continue maintaining this cover of clouds and lightning, like a rolling storm over the lands itself coming towards the church. Easy enough to rest up and make yourselves ready for the distant travel. At some points, Nero comes up on deck, kind of just admiring the storm, but also kind of testing her wings, not taking off, but feeling her, the wind catch between them. Eventually, after a night to be able to relax and collect yourselves, another meal cooked by Ku. It'd be easy. somewhere around the same point, slightly darker as the sun is starting to fall once you see the mountains finally. Can I? Oh, well, you're never mind. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask if I could have. I wanted to see. I talked to Pelos again about the fucking. You might guess. There is a whole day in between. Um. It, Ramus, you were going to say something first. Oh, no. Um. He 
I guess you skipped a little bit, but I just was going to take over for you, but we're essentially here, I'm assuming. I would love to hear what it looks like. Oh, no, I just can try and sort of blend us in, you know, like mm -hmm. sort of envelop in a shadow, but like magical darkness where we can like see out of it, but they can't see into it. Because, or at least... Hmm. Maybe it forms under us? Yeah, like underneath instead of a full globe, because I doubt Paul Gain would be able to see through it. So like a soup bowl, almost. A magic soup bowl to carry us to victory. I just try and spread it on the underneath of the airship, you know? Like mm. evil peanut butter. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but in the meantime, I was sitting there and meditating this thing to try and see what came of it and if I got any more um, into the sword or the arm uh, especially with that you do start to feel the manipulations of being able to grant and take away the gifts from the arm though it's not entirely perfect just yet though you feel like you would still be able to imbue people with various mutations even up to effectively their con modif uh, modifier and limitation before the onslaught of other mutations might take hold as there are too many for the person's constitution to handle is it like time limit do I set that or do I just... Uh, if it's not a permanent effect and you want to give them one temporarily, it would only last an hour. But you don't have the perfect artistry yet as you've not tried using this on a person fully. You would still need some practice on willing test subjects, but you do know that these would only last an hour. Okay, so do I not know what they are yet? Not yet. That would unfortunately still take some practice. It's one that you've... Yeah. Anyone want to volunteer for uh, mutation day? Unless you make a blank dummy. Another me. Uh. That's no, not even, me? not even another me. Just like a, just like you... a body without, just locomotion. That's really it. That's cool. Do Who's into it? Do you want? <laughs> do you want to try? Do you want to test it on me? No, I'd rather. He it literally can't hurt. If he dies, I can make another one. Motor can make another one. I know, but he's useful. I don't know what's going to happen doing this, you know? I haven't done it yet, so it'd be easier to do it on, like, a blank slate. How about one of the griffins? You can sacrifice one of the griffins. I, no, that's terrible. You're right. That's yeah. that's horrible. Do we have like a not... rat? <laughs> is there is there a rat I'm on the boat? I'm literally writing one right now. High or low for favorable results? Me or the one who always says hi, baby. Uh, the one who wants to find the rat. I'm not wanting to find the rat. He wants to find something to use it on. I just said maybe there's a rat aboard. Yeah, I'm this... just giving ideas to the DM. Well, I guess we'll just have to battle test this then. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I mean, cool. Raise a hand. It's like, that. Alice is right. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. No test mutations for the temporary time. 
No, I guess we'll find out like we do everything else <laughs> in the most reckless way possible. <laughs> Gets into a combat, turns them into a half cow. The upper half. <laughs> oh no. No, that would be ridiculous. Uh, so. Even with the storm in tow arriving on the setting sun, seeing this almost bejeweled city of temples, you also see upon the mountainside that is decorating this entire enormity of, well, the worship of the Pantheon, an arena to match and to show of respect in lieu of even the gods of battle here. You can see that the, at this Grand Colosseum what seems to be the various gods of the Pantheon. High, low, and even those considered tyrannical or dark, showing respect to everything that maintains the order of the world. Looking down upon the various farmlands that are creeping up to what seems to be the ever-grown cliff face that has been carved into and set upon by various guardianships as well as even what seems to be an amphitheater just at the basin. You see what looks like the most immaculate of the temples all lined ar around the top. Some that look like they have traveled further up and even have started carving into the mountain themselves making new homes there within. And even, thankfully, as you keep yourselves covered, what looks like a new airship that has been maybe procured to help protect the temples of Shishopaniki. One that is larger in size, something that looks like it would carry multiple troops and be able to respond quickly if an army was to suddenly appear without being impeded by the shape or even the sheer scale of the cliffs of the city itself. It's at this point that Olgain, spying around, sees what looks like a few respective patches of forest near the farmland's edges that might be an excellent spot to touch down on where you can enter in on foot or would you try to get closer and then he would go to touch down elsewhere as you enter on the upper level of the city first how is dark is it she should make Uh, for the level of darkness, it's basically just after dusk, so getting to that point of near pitch black, if it wasn't for the fact that you were at least facing where the sun was going from the other direction where it sets and gives almost like a pearlescent pink and ruby sheen to most of the marbled rooftops and other sections of the city, you could tell that in probably less than 30 minutes being near pitch black from the sky and possibly some lights with the rain probably put out some of the torches and give some better cover for the night as you are coming down the land within this city. Josh, who does this city belong to? Is this is this Shishpaniki land? <sighs> Uh, specifically, yes, the Shishupaniki lands, as well as the... It's mainly stated to be per, uh, proprietored by the temples and churches. Mm. So, more a religious sect slash barony, and without current situation of, you know, no monarchy, since there is no king on the throne. This, this is surprising, especially for Thalos, only because... The only thing he's seen of Shishupunik is demon worship and slavers. So he's kind of taken aback at the level of civilization and the actual seeming reverence towards religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just just in the way of mindset. 
completely fair. This is not what I expected. That is worrisome, because you are all the ones who should know what to expect here. All that are... I have seen up to this point were slavers, and Warmongers. those who use yeah, and yeah, warmongers. This is civilization. Well, this, I mean, to keep, mon you know, warmongers in power and mongering war, you need quite a bit of population to sustain them. Is that, did you not think that there would be civilians? I did not think that there would be innocents. Innocent, let's, that's yet to be seen. You could not possibly condemn a whole nation. Absolutely not, but... We've only seen one side of that nation. A war machine this big. With a city this big. I doubt they're all under uh, slavery or fear of control. No, I, I can't imagine that they all are. Many must benefit from the system for the system to be in, well, still spinning. Where there is civilization, there can be discussion. Perhaps even reason. Maybe at which, the bottom. But not which, at the top. Is, which is why we snuck in so we can reason with them. Ashiki, with your time Anik as a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to make a further joke. I'm sorry. Maybe no, no, no. <laughs> look for allies. Ashiki, yes. with your time as a bard, have you ever journeyed through these cities in Shushpanik before? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I have been here quite an, often, actually. I'm... I am from not too far from here and i've passed through many a time mm -hmm. where is the part where is the poorest what would you know where the poorest part of the city is a place where there would be less oversight by okay um what would I know that, DM? 100%. Uh, uh, you would know that would be in the back valleys near where the mines are. All right. They're in the back valleys um, near where the mines are. We should still consider disguises. Even when going to the bottom, there will always be uh, opportunists. Counting on it. Opportunists who are on the poorer side of any city are more willing to accept gold to look the other way. Or to turn us in, so... Disguises. Fair enough. I'll lead you to lead the, uh... <clears throat> our escort into the realm of shadow. I look to both Ramus and Ashiki. Like, you know lead on. Alright, so we're sneaking in through the the poor folk. Alright. Sneaking in with the pores. We we can always we can always leave the ship up in the darkness and we can descend. Most of us can fly. And those who can't can use uh Modar's rug. I mean if he's cool with it. She begins to fucking cry. <laughs> Some of us can fly. <laughs> I can take you on the... <laughs> yes, yes, I'll take the magic carpet. I uh, you no. Is your birthday coming up anytime soon, Ashiki? Or anything like that? Because I can prepare the spell fly. I can do it. I can make you fly. <laughs> Am I... Wait, can I... Like... Can I uh... Is this a good moment for a test drive? This is no. a great moment for a test drive. Oh, no, please. please this please. is a great what moment for a test drive. Can I what if I use mutation? What if I use my I, magic I, to I, try and channel 
it into a, f a permanent fly spell. Sort I of, like bit my tongue earlier, but I would like to be mutated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding a sharpie like a microphone right now. It's it's really funny. You should turn your camera back on. <laughs> what the ring? Hey man. Yeah. Uh, Shiki has literally never turned down a drug in her life. Like, <laughs> mutation? Yeah! I've seen God, motherfucker. Let's go. Mutation? You drink that? You snort that? You smoke that? Yeah. She injects mutation. <laughs> Alright. Uh. Roll me a. D100. Yes, I will. I will do that right now. 99! Yeah. Oof. Um... Did I try that? Yes, also... <laughs> wow. Should I try that? Yeah, I mean, if, if you want. Uh, obviously going for it, so... Can I try and cast Fly also to help with this, like to help channel the magic? Perhaps direct it slightly? Uh, you know what? I'll give Modar another one, as you guys are like, trying to fish out the right magic in this. Alright. Hey, there's gotta be some combo of those three numbers. I'm willing I, to burn. I, I am so ready for whatever happens. Okay, so. Okay. <clears throat> As you are um, trying to focus the, the fly magic, all this, and try to fish out the correct spell, you feel like you get close to what you were going for initially. But then something feels slightly off. You're going to get arms on the back of your fucking body that flap and let you fly. Uh, suddenly, it's like, you know, you see the same thing that happened to Nira initially, where the skin starts to stretch and expand on Shiki's back. Starts to tear away as you see more feathers, but then you see another beak. And then, as it finishes forming and becomes like almost slightly giraffe necked a little bit, it looks around as a second head of a shiki looks at everyone and it's just like, What the fuck are you looking at? What are you doing? Why'd you do this to me? Why am I attached to this asshole still? Now that is interesting. Now Holy you- Holy shit! <laughs> that was- Was that you talking? Uh, was it? <laughs> it was- You heard your own voice, but it came from this head. So wait, is this head... Its it, own personality? It's other you with its own personality. <laughs> Fascinating. Ah, this is everything to me. And so if I I poke the the new head in the cheek, Ashton's gonna this come back and have a stroke and die. <laughs> <laughs> well, this and this will last an hour. Yeah. Oh, I'm a, a Shiki's gonna have to like sneak in and scare Ashton. Oh my god. <laughs> It has a vivid nightmare of a Shigi having two heads for a minute and then getting clubbed in the back of the head. This poor Ashen's laying down. He fucking sees two headed a Shigi walk in. The one at the back cranes its neck looking at him over the shoulder of other ish like first a Shigi. <laughs> oh. Ram 
Travis actually looks kind of amused. Like, he's curious, but he's like, I guess. Oh my god, Ashiki's gonna, like, have a sudden moment of realization. <laughs> and she's gonna, um, pull out her lute and begin to strum and sing. And, like, as she's singing, she's looking at uh, the other head to see if it'll join in harmony. Immediately <laughs> goes into the duet with you, like, fuck yes. <laughs> it, it breaks out into this, this sweeping, like, choral arrangement as both of them are Kenku heads that can replicate <laughs> things that Shiki has seen. <laughs> The two different choirs both strike up their bands at the same time. And then she just very quickly and they both stop singing at the same time. And she's like, I clap. This is awesome. I clap. Can this be permanent? <laughs> Damn right, it's permanent. We're fucking awesome. I, I also gesture at you. I say, by the way, you can fly. I did cast that spell. In Shiki will rise, out, <laughs> rise, rise <up>. into the <laughs> air <laughs> and just begin to scream. <laughs> this is the best day of her life. <laughs> but yes, uh, Sekina Shiki will be there for a whole hour. <laughs> All right. This uh, is everything. <laughs> so, uh, as the other Shiki's kind of looking around, like, so we going down or what? Or are you gonna keep staring at our beautiful faces for this long? It's distracting to have two of us, I know. I know, just so much beauty in one room or one ship. I can't imagine how Rain feels about seeing this shit happen. She's been slowly sipping on her flask, and she's just, like, chalking it up to being drunk. Fair. Just imagining it. All right. Yeah, it's all in her head, so she's not even going to say anything out loud, because she doesn't want to give it away that she's seeing shit. <laughs> I'm not hallucinating. You're hallucinating. I'm not an illusion. You're the illusion. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, will you descend now, I assume? Let us descend and enjoy this two-headed monster. Alright, Paul, you are happy with yourself. <laughs> That's what Thalos says to Ramus. <laughs> what did he say? I hope you are happy with yourself. Happy? Amused? Yeah. I think it's fascinating. <laughs> Ecstatic is the word you're looking for. Now, the question is, is it sort of like the antithesis of you? It seemed to have a similar taste in music, but did call you a chit sack when it did, was created. But now you seem quite, but are you making out with your own head? Oh my god. <laughs> this is actually so in character. <laughs> Oh, by the way, since you have the extra head. <laughs> Hell yeah! Nice! Good shit. That's cool. If you close your eyes, can you see through her eyes? What was that? If you close your eyes, can you see yourself through her eyes? Ashiki closes her eyes. Can I? Uh, you can still see because her eyes are open, so your brain feeds over to hers and you see yourself. Holy shit, I can see myself. God, I'm so sexy. It is good you and they start making out stuff. again. <laughs> <laughs> just, just beaks clacking. Just, yeah, clacking beaks loud. Loud, like fencing. <laughs> oh, God. Look at Rain. It's like, are you seeing this? And she's just like, I'm not seeing anything. I'm fine. I, um, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm seeing <laughs> things, all right. What do you? Wait, wait. What? 
What are you saying? Who <laughs> headed the shiki? Oh, yeah. oh, this is funny. Greatest band name You're funny. Ever. You're funny. Who headed a shiki? <laughs> oh, that's funny good. joke. Funny joke. I don't get I it. I mean, it's strange yeah. is what we do. It's true. Two headed Ashiki will be in your nightmares tonight. Singing a lovely barbershop quartet <laughs> rendition of, um, I don't know, that lollipop song. To the window, to the wall. <laughs> lollipop, lollipop. Yes. Uh, Hilarious. Crank that version by that. Soldier Boy. Oh my god. But the loot version, please. And it's a barbershop quartet. It's what? a really yeah. mixed genre. Yeah. Medieval barbershop okay. quartet loot. <laughs> both, both of the heads couldn't agree on the genre. <laughs> so they just threw them all together and it came out beautifully. Alright, are we descending? Yeah. Yes. Alright. All right. Uh, so you storm clouds. Uh. You descend as the storm clouds. I assume you take the sword with you, so they'll slowly start dissipating. But Paul Gain will find purchase to kind of hide the ship behind one of the mountain ranges. Do so. As you yeah, we just need them to land. You know. Pretty much. But with that, you. Descend into basically the Miner's Valley. You can see what seems like very dirty, busy, very dirty and busy work, constantly excavating what seems to be various precious materials between what looks like gems and a very odd looking green metallic ore. As you take a moment to kind of study over the location that you've touched down in. You can even see what looks like a few other children running around, kind of having fun. Those of just lesser lives are constantly digging in the mines, or even those who are obviously other children that do work in the mines to continue to excavate more exclusive veins or other gems that have been found within these ranges. So fairly rustic at the outer fringes. You can even see where many of the ore carts have been transported or even make their way towards the upper upper valley hills. One that seems to have almost like a, well, far, far as you can tell from this distance, almost like a slow crank lift at, towards the top. You can see, especially for the wood wood crane, especially for the heavier loads of ore, it looks like they have probably oxen or e even larger lizards that go in rotation to be able to maintain the f the full ordinance of the lift as well as bring them up to what looks like a few smithies towards the back of the valley. A lot of runoff happens to drain, drain down into the valley. Much of the water that you've washed over seems to be rinsing a lot of soot and ash down. You can see a lot of the... A lot of the people and other denizens are actually enjoying the rain. It doesn't seem like too much of it hits this valley that often, so... Even though it's the cover, it seems to have wrought quite a few people up and has been... Uh, well, basically giving you a significant amount of people in a crowd to kind of just... Neander through and, you know, shift between without being noticed too much. With that situ situation laid out, you also see that, especially for where the main hill heads up for the main lift, as well as what seems to be a very long winding path by foot, very thin amount of guards, none that seem too serious at this section. As you can tell, it's more or less just a courtesy with a few guard houses posted around the small township down here in the Miner's Valley. Doesn't seem like they would have too many crimes going on as people are more or less focused on making a living from down here. But 
if you were to travel by foot up, you would probably have to pass by what looks like maybe two or three groups of guards that have just been posted up, probably bored out of their mind for the current situation. Oh, we lost rain. We did. What better, kiddo? Hey Josh, can we tell what language they're speaking? It, does it seem like something other than common? Uh, for the various races that are here, you can tell that there are surprisingly quite a lot of tiefling down here. Uh, seems to be a fair amount of infernal as well as uh, common, and as semi-expected dwarvish, uh, even what seems kind of like under common a little bit conjecture between what as far as you can tell seems to be some deep gnomes did I've you say under common yeah. yes okay i also have under common and gnomish Ooh. Mm. Definitely pick up on the uh, Sniff Neville with the Deep Gnomes still kind of discussing whether or not they want to hit one of the main bars near the smithies at the top of the hill. The trek would probably be, be a while, but uh, the Dragged Flagon is the one that they are aforementioning as, you know, a good inn and one, one that lets you, uh, even if you're from the valley, kind of rent a room up there. It's a little more lackadaisical with its rules. Who speaks Infernal? Ironically, I think Rain. Let me double check. Uh, no, she doesn't. I'm not sure if anyone here speaks Infernal. Good. Uh, is tongues a ritual spell? Do I even have it? <laughs> Something to definitely check. Comprehend languages. Uh, I could cast it. It will take me 10 minutes. But I can do it. No. I, mm. You got to. Oh, Ramus, do, yeah. do you speak Infernal? Um, I don't think so. Okay, alright. Actually, let me see. Right. I can. I, it, it seems like it might be important. I can. Here's just. Give me. Give me the like, ten minute. I start like pulling out like <laughs> fucking like spell reagents, so and salt. And I start drawing a symbol in the dirt in front of me, and I'm like murmuring and chanting over it, and my hands start to glow a little bit. I've got Pass Without Trace going, so we, we can, like, sort of stick close to the shadows while you're doing that for 10 minutes. Yeah, and then I 
comprehend any spoken language that I can hear. All right. Uh, so with that, especially for the infernal part, you do hear the aforementioned uh, deep gnomes discussing whether or not they want to go to the dragon flagon. But for the infernal parts, many seem to be discussing what seems to be the latest bet on the upcoming fights within the, within the arena bouts. They said that some some of the generals and other knights order from the pantheons were supposed to be attending in the next current fight. Others taking interest in whether or not some are going to die outright in the midst of the combat, as usually it doesn't end. And if there is a death in between, that is usually the risk set set on the group battles. One that sticks out in the aforementioned roster between many of the pantheons a familiar name one that is shared for a la last name with one of your party Artorius Delacroix Daddy that's off. not good I'm sorry could you repeat that one of the fighters in the like games is Rain's dad. Ah. Uh, well, it sounds like we know where we're going. But what about uh, Ramus? Like you said, disguises. Yeah, we fit some kind of even if it's just cloaks or something. Uh, I'm just pretty well known. We've been murking these dudes for a while. Uh, let's True. see. Go ahead and give me uh, quick perception checks for everyone. All right. Uh, you know, Ramus, you're kind of preoccupied. You're kind of sizing up a lot of the guards, making sure there's no other people kind of spotting you from afar. Uh, Ashiki, Thalas, and Modar quickly take note that on what seems to be a fairly neglected bounty board, one that looks like papers have just kind of been tacked on or nails pulled out and then just repeatedly slapped on with fresh glue or other, just weathered. What looks to be a wanted poster with a somewhat familiar description and at the bottom you see the dead ass rangers even though some of the descriptions aren't exact going over Jin but seems to be more like the chin was like excessively detailed to be one of those extreme like stu you know stud chins just really sharp. He pretty much looks like the Giga Chad me. <laughs> and even even for Modar, it's picture of Modar, but like with the study cap on and then like a backpack full of books and then another book in hand and then a staff in the other hand. And even continues on and then even showing uh, Thalos as like Dwarf, but shorter, and then like a mushroom hat for some reason, with mushrooms growing off of his staff, as well as you, Ramus, where it's the tiger form, but then they added on what looks like demonic bat wings, and even just kind of like accentuated some of like the more excessive details, and then just kind of threw all of, all of your forms together in one. To be Sounds like a One Piece posters. Pretty much. Uh, for the total of dead or alive that you see on these posters, each one of you is worth what seems to be uh, 20,000 gold, dead or alive. Each. Thick. Sickening. Kind of 
TBH. <laughs> this is the second or third time she's had a bounty on her head. <laughs> this is probably the big one, right? Oh, the big one. Yeah, for sure. As far as you can see for the crimes listed, uh, theft from the church, besmirchment of the church, assault and destruction of order of the church, killing and refusal of arrest and denouncement of the church and the de guards there within and the chapels there within. As overall, yeah. on the final line stated in full caps of enemy of the providence. <laughs> Thick. We are pariahs. We just wandered right in here, huh? Yeah. But um, the good thing he went to the shitty part, because everyone here doesn't give a fuck about catching people. They're just trying to live the miner's life. Well. I do have greater invisibility. I'm so sorry, Ashiki. Is it dark? Yes. You've only been with us for a couple of weeks, and yeah. yet you're right here with us. <laughs> Is there it's one of Ashiki? I'm blending in already. Uh, with Ashin, uh, surprisingly, let's see the current circumstance time. No, there's not one of Ashton. Because Ashton is the, one of the most recent, along with Ashiki. But obviously, the dead ass ranger is going by name. It's easy to assume that Ashiki might be lumped into that after the bar situation, along with Ashton. So you're saying that Ashiki has a louder personality than Ashton? I just don't. I just don't see that that is true at all. No way. We That's definitely impossible. don't have like an odd couple thing going on. Definitely a lot more beautiful than that ugly fuck. Hey oh. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely noted the other other head is a lot more aggressive. The other head is a fucking dick. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, sorry, everybody. I don't know what. I, I promise that's not what's going on in here. I'm. <laughs> uh, especially with that. Uh, how do you want to proceed? Obviously, doesn't seem like there's anyone calling guards on you. It is fairly dark with the rain. It does help even more so. So everything's. Pretty dim. Doesn't seem like a lot is currently happening. You can see that they are getting quite a few carts of ore r rode up to the lift, as well as what seems to be uh, much of the transportation ready to bring said lift up to the forges. Saki. I just, I have no idea how we would get to where we're going being caught at mm. this point because we are a tiger man a blue man bird man with two heads and a dwarf man a tiger man who's basically looks like he's blending in with the shadows an invisible tiger man mm. i'm sure we all have hoods at least oh easily i would imagine you all have hogs of you know don't look at me kind of gray shade. I throw on my cloak of don't look at me over my cloak of billowing. <laughs> cloak of billowing rumbles softly. With the exception of unless you're staring straight at him and you can see teeth or some fur, it looks like Grimms isn't even there at all. He's taking this shadow thing very seriously and using it to the best of his ability. So I kind of like what he did to the boat. <laughs> the baby. We proceed. So. All right. Uh, going for the main walks where the very sparse guardhouses. They. Like I said, they don't even seem like they're paying attention. They're more or less interested. I mean, how, how far is the trip? 
can, like we we can't see it from here, can we? Uh, the li lift going up the mountainside along with the walk valley. We can see the lift, but we can't see the 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 supposed like place where where the dad. This is good. This is good. I'm just trying to fig like figure if we should try taking and less than uh, not the main path like side streets and shit with that you can definitely go for it I mean majority of you can fly obviously it seems like the only paths that are really guarded is the one going directly from the miner they don't assume that most people are going to be flying as far as you can tell with that you do see what looks like a couple of offshoots that are not as uh well tracked, or tracked, I should say, but uh, at the far ends on the east and west sides, looks like there's a few valleys that kind of slowly trek up the side of the uh, the mountains for the valley itself. But not sure how sturdy those are, and it looks more or less like less desirables of this valley who do mining work are just either maybe have hidden out down here or occasionally trek up there to the few bars that are less reputable, like how you heard the Deep Gnomes talking. I mean, if we can all fly, let us fly. Because mm. if, we're, if we're past without trace, and I slap you two onto the flying carpet, Ramis and I and Rain all fly. That's going to be the best and the stealthiest and the quietest way. Ramis has scary black uh, stealth bowl of darkness. And protectors. shadow wings. Yeah. Shadow bowl below, shadow wings above. I think we're designing the ranger crest now. It's Tim's <laughs> with a bowl of darkness underneath. <laughs> multi -co probably the wings are like different it like is one of each color of the of the ranger's wings you have the 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 golden the green eventual like i imagine they'll be viney you have the electric blue and the shadowy black and what was the new one that we just learned about the color uh the pearlescent one pearlescent Which is somewhere in this city, as far as you know. So, obviously with Pass Without a Trace, uh, I wouldn't even worry about you guys rolling stealth, especially with the cover of night and a plus 10. It's basically impossible for the lazy guards that they have posted up at the back lifts to even notice you. Especially since it looks like as far as you can tell, the majority are human, so they can't even see that far out, especially with the current rain and darkness. So, uh, which sections would you head for first? Uh, more the middle with the lift still, or kind of a traveled condensed side of the city? Whatever is going to be... Where does, where does Rain think we should go? <laughs> I would imagine she would if she heard of her father's name being mentioned at the Coliseum. I mean, this is kind of her thing. We should probably not tarry. If people are actually talking about uh, the matches that are going on there, they've got to be a hot spot for nightlife, so... We'll be able to blend in with the crowds that are probably heading there anyway. Mm -hmm. Take a little bit of the circuitous, circuitous route, avoid most main roads, any patrols yeah. or anything like that. Maybe we could try and stick to the rooftop still since we're all flying. She can give everyone tips on how to mingle with the nightlife. And Ramus can help us mingle with the night. Oh. Uh, especially with the rain that's still overhead from the storm that you had produced. It's... I thought rain was with us. 
<laughs> but um, oh, I'll get you. But, but um, I love the sake man. You put that. Are, are there any um? Are there any uh like roots that are, well, less lit? Like most of us probably have dark vision. Uh, do you mean like? A... Do you mean like lit or like? <laughs> uh, the I one, mean, le- the where, least where lit. Where the vibes sour? Mm-hmm. Uh, the most sour vibes for extra darkness definitely this side. As you can see yeah. that even though there's still a good portion of money over here, the area that seems to be the most lit up and well kept is definitely more of the what seems to be southwestern ward of the city. And then even leading up to what seems to be a much larger almost like temple slash estate. That has been maintained and watched over you can even see that even though this leads up into the mountainside itself it doesn't look like the mines itself it looks more of like somebody procured that part of the mountain and then started building mansions and safe havens going into the mountain itself nothing better than the view of the people beneath you exactly so, especially from here Look at everyone de- down on everyone. But, uh, especially with the cover of rain, don't even need to worry about rolling your stealth, especially with that plus 10. As you skirt around and immediately make your way towards the more noisier section, as the Coliseum seems to be in. Well, preparations. Not total ruckus, but you can even see what looks like people with betting booths and boxes safeguarded behind what seems like various metal bars and trading money in and out. You can see a lot of the miners have either taken the same route as you, kind of, you know, dipped through the city, much like uh, Ashiki had mentioned, especially knowing that a lot of the betting rings here would be extraordinarily good. (laughs) Definitely following her lead. Because she, uh, got this through. Upon getting closer for the inspection of this Coliseum, you can see it spans massively from edge to edge, and even the aforementioned gods that have been kind of kept in the various windows, very the Roman Coliseum-esque style, even... Ones that would definitely be considered tyrannical, like Bane and such, or even here in representation. Nothing has been left out. Almost as if literally all manners of life, religion, ilk, or good are welcome within the walls of the Colosseum. And one of the main emblazoned as probably the most revered is ironically of all things the god that rain had followed suit on which would be the emblem of the flaming sword tempest and see him gloriously embellished in his statue what seems to be kind of various bronze covered over this the statue itself to represent the armor with the marble underneath that's been smoothly carved axe in hand a sever head of what looks like an orc in the other as he rides what looks like a savage looking steed covered in spiked armor as you two take note of what seems to be the various bedding windows it looks like there's even sections where people are able to sign up for some of these battles areas where they can go in private and be able to enter into the arena as they see fit, either going for a one-on-one bout, some are to life and death, others would seem to be sparring, something that would be once the contender has either knocked you out or you bend the knee would be the end of the situation. So, especially- Finally time for our tournament arc. Yeah. But as you uh, also see the betting boards there, it seems to be, as far as you can tell, looks like so far eight names listed. 
and as for the listing of the other names in the squads it's easy enough to spot out what looks like to be Artoi has Delacroix written out in very fanciful infernal and then curiously enough a few others that are scrabbled in infernal as well for the names themselves seems like a number of tieflings are purposely betting on that troop that he is a part of seems to be called the hell's hammers The Hell's Hammers? Mm-hmm. When is their next match? Uh, so... Hope that... It seems like probably two days from now would be the next bout for the Hell's Hammers. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, is there a helpful sign that tells us where to find the Hell's Hammers? Yeah, would I, time? would I maybe have, like... Can I roll maybe to have, like, heard of them? Maybe I know, like, what bars they frequent. Hmm. Give me a history at advantage. It's a bit tough to say, but you would know, uh, especially for this arena, because you've been near here and through here before, that you might be able to, you know convince one of the one or two of the other people who are responsible for collecting those who are going to be in the bouts and get information of where they might be occasionally Ooh, people okay. try to uh you know grease the palms and try and sway fights by doing so all right so uh, shiki's gonna relay that to everybody and then basically make eyes for the first person near them that has to do with that Uh, just give me a quick perception as you, you know you're trying to sift through this crowd seeing the large amount of tieflings that are kind of crowding the booth it's a little difficult to get through just you know in the immediate vicinity damn all right Jeez. uh you definitely see a few that you've recognized before but very quickly take note of it seems to be one that's kind of purposely trying to stick more off to the side so people aren't harassing him as much. Oh. Uh, Shiki's gonna, hmm? gonna, you know, point him out to everybody. And... I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh no, I was just gonna say, uh, the first thing you are able to fully discern of him is, uh, he himself is, as far as you can tell, what looks like a half-elf. Okay, Shiki's gonna stride on over and, and, um, uh, like, you know, approach him, uh, like, give him a hello. Uh, she is, she's never, she's never really approached somebody in his field, but she's approached plenty of shady guys, she thinks. Mm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, can I, um, can I help you out? Um, I'm looking for maybe, uh, some information about, or what are they called again? The Hell's something? Oh, you're looking to make a bet on the Hell's Hammers. Uh, I'm not a bet. I'm, I'm looking to, I'm looking to, to speak with them. Maybe... You might know where they like to hang out. I mean, I'm not really supposed to kind of share that information, like. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you saw them at a bar one time, it's not like that's private information. Uh, I mean, sure, maybe in passing, but like, uh. I didn't roll me uh, persuasion, the Shiki. Lovely. 
Hmm. I, you know, a good portion of them like to, uh, I've seen them relaxing more towards the center on the west side of kind of the Celestine bar. It was a good area to probably find them. Oh, pretty good spirits there if you're looking to you know, maybe catch the ear of one or two of the groups. Are you looking to you know, kind of set up, you know, a dive question, you know? Um, all right. She's, she's gonna thank him for that information. Uh, extend her hand for a handshake, and in that hand is a platinum coin. She's gonna give him the old Irish handshake. <laughs> and, um, head back to the crew and tell them the information. Gives you a, a wink as he slips the coin into his pouch and, uh, you know, make sure that no one else was kind of watching him. Goes back to, about his uh, business, trying to keep bounce balance though, supposedly. All right, so I think our next location. Uh, we we know we know where we're going. <laughs> As for the Celestine, you are familiar. Uh, unfortunately, is on one of the main roads. We'll have to be doing some disguising. Right here, next to one of the main temple roads. What if we used magic to make it look like we were pretending to be the dead ass rangers? <laughs> a deception within a deception. Deception, deception. Again. Again, one piece. Look like cheap imposters. <laughs> I like your Zuko costume, but your scar's on the wrong side. It's like Modar holds his staff in the other hand. It's like, no! No, he doesn't! <laughs> Fuck! Uh, he has a staff in each hand, actually. Yeah, that, that was actually the funniest part. It's like the stack of books in the bag. It's like, staff in each hand. It's like, book and staff. Like, no, that's wrong. No, no. So, is there vegetation in the valley? Is there like uh, on these like lighted streets? Are there are, are there trees that are uh, that are clearly there, or is it sort of like cleared streets? Is it all like sort of like cobblestone and concrete with no real rooted plant life? Uh, there's still sparse amounts of trees here and there. Some that are decoration, or even kind of like gardening ornament to more stylize the location for some temples or homes. But there's still some. Hmm. All right. I think I've got an idea. I can I can take a stroll over there without being seen. Identify a close by tree, and then I can do the uh that step through tree transport thing the That's rest of us can can get over there without having to walk through the open streets what do you think sounds like a group plan i have yet to hear another one let's do it i have no ideas it is a great plan and that it is the only plan unless we would like to, to it, sorry no, 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 you're good. Go. Unless we would like to come back tomorrow, in which case I could prepare whatever spells you guys want. But I don't really want to come back tomorrow. 
The game of waiting patiently. Mm. No. Boo! We have the the game of, of charging forward without heeding any consequences. To save Rain's father! Onward! <laughs> we have the cover of night right now, so we might as well take advantage of it. I mean, are we in agreement on this, or...? Yes. Alright. In that case, I use my natural Gwergar ability, and I go invisible. This is it. For an hour. And uh, I pretty much... I pretty much go try to find like the closest tree I can. I mark it. I memorize where it is. And then when I make my way back to the party, um, I cast transport via plants. I find a different tree somewhere in the shadows for us to use as a portal to the tree I marked in the first place. Sure. So that, uh, easy enough to find what seems to be like a tree just behind the temple that's on the main row here. Kind of like the church's garden. And not too far from the Colosseum, but more or less up towards the cliff face in these areas, you do find one of the trees there bearing fruit, able to kind of get to the more rustic area and able to tear open a doorway. Immediately getting behind the temple, uh, let's see, high or low for favorable results? Hi. You know, baby, it's always high. Roll with a d20. Here we go. Alrighty. Uh, so especially coming out on the other side with the doorway in the tree open uh thankfully no one is currently passing through the garden with that you are able to get to the celestine bar unmolested without issue you do see what looks like a few regimented guards kind of patrolling what seems to be more or less the larger temple yard it seems like a large portion of the order Maintains houses here for a lot of troops, and this seems to be their main training yard here. And even what seems to be a larger temple body here. But with that knowledge, as you head into the Selstein Bar... Uh, well, you try to get into the Selstein Bar. But at the front door, initially, <clears throat> this person seems to have... Almost iridescent hair, uh, the platinum blonde hair, as far as you can tell. Just so vibrant and almost the your eyes, and they see a soft glow to their irises as well. And what seems to almost be like celestial designs on their face. As they kind of take note of you and kind of slowly raise an eyebrow, it's like, I'm not sure I can help you. Are you looking for the Valley Miner Guild? Sure. I... Wait, he's he asking. He's asking. Us, he's the guy at the door, right? Yeah, he's basically like the bouncer. Okay. Um, he he goes, "Are you guys with these?" And I and I just say, "You should let us in." We're looking for Gandalf. All right, let me roll that real quick. We're friends of Dorothy. Um, of course, uh, sorry, like, you can see he kind of takes it in a little more, uh, especially with, uh, your look, Modar, realizing that it's just, you know, heavy cloaks to protect yourself from the rain, and, I, uh, sorry, I'll get the door for you then. Yep, no problem, just, and I, we, we, we hurry quickly fast before he realizes that that was weird. Because <laughs> thankfully, unlike Charm Person, this one doesn't say that they realize 
so long as it wasn't something weird, I assume that they would not live a horror film about it. And it just comes running in like, you motherfucker! Alright. So, especially upon entering into this location, it is very lavish, very clean. Everything seems to be decorated with either some form of marble or kind of like a smooth, smoothed over and carefully made mosaic. Others that seem to have depictions of celestial bodies and even the roof itself seems to have almost like a permanent twinkling light ceiling of stars that have been kind of embedded into it. You see there are a few soldiers here and there that look much more higher in rank as well as what looks possibly in the far end corners with some of the booths that are more private as far as you could tell even though some are not being that quiet maybe where so, oh, some of the other teams have been for the, ah, their bouts but it's at that point where you can easily take note that obviously either unless you're competing within the arena and are, have a well-known name or have been a respected possible temple member or higher ranking officer within the temple's armies probably usually can't get into this place that often and security seems fairly relaxed aside from the door seems fairly trusted uh you know people who do come in here are supposed to be here especially due to the fact that you're just across from the main army barracks their music uh yes there is it is not entirely haughty but it is a fairly fairly relaxed tune that has just been softly strum on various string instruments taking turns as far as you can tell between kind of violins viols occasionally cellos here and there something you know that you would usually hear more to a noble's mansion and a kin kinship fancy fancy do we see any um like proper sort of like high ranking soldiers from the Shishapanik army not that we do like know them by sight, but I mean, just sort of like anybody in uniform. Of, yeah, anybody in uniform, particular like badges, ranks, anything like that. Is there anybody wearing a shirt that says, Hi, I'm Rain Delacroix's father? <laughs> Please rescue me. I would also accept name tag. <laughs> So, I gotta recon. Go with a, a slightly on edge tune. So, looking at the various commanders, as well, as far as you could assume, commanders, some that look like they might be paladins. Others that are just clearly squires before they take their oaths are in training and just enjoying celebration between maybe good training and all. Go ahead and roll me a perception as you are all trying to spot around, especially for the crowd of denizens that are within. One that would stick out the most. Damn, that, that three kind of burns, doesn't, don't it, Thalos? Mm. Yep. <laughs> that one's no fun. So, as you're looking around, uh, Thalos Modar, you are, you know, you're attempting to search around, but, uh, you know, the stewardess and you, others. Been, they all look the same. Yeah. They, the stewardess and such all are coming over trying to, you know, guide you to a seat or ask you if you want a booth in her. You know, kind of in your way, pasturing you a little bit. Uh, Ashiki 
you're you're used to this so you're able to kind of work through and you're spying through some of the crowd and you see one person in particular who seems to stand out the most uh fairly sharp features as far as you can tell but allow me to get an image of him as you do spy him from across the way much more serious toned looking fellow did you say toad toned He's a toad, no. I was like, oh, work. He's a toad. Did somebody say toad? <laughs> oh my god, he's so big. <laughs> a giant of a man. Uh, but no, uh, definitely still wearing exactly what you see him in the image with. Uh, it looks like very battered and weathered armor that has clearly seen an immense amount of use a what seems almost like marble-esque hammer that doesn't have any damage to speak of as far as you can tell from the looks of it and upon his back what looks to be in peculiar uh a peculiar fashion uh javelin stylized at both ends with it seems to be almost blue metal and in a lightning shape he seems to be stoically kind of sitting alone more at the bar's end and just kind of a little deep in his cups at the moment. Uh, especially since Rain is still with you, Rain kind of seems to go a little more rigid and kind of, you know, eyes locked in said direction after you kind of point him out. Is that your dad? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, trying to figure out what you do, uh, whether or not you just start storming over there. So, um... Mm. Okay, who's the brave boy? Uh... As Rain would confirm it, that is Artorius Delacroix. And I think this... It's unfortunate, but this would probably be a good spot to leave off on. Yeah. As 100%... I fucking cast a fireball and start a bar fight. Yeah. We have combat. <laughs> yeah! Uh... Because I'm not sure 100% what Rain would do in this situation of if she would storm over immediately. I have a question. Can we just try and kidnap him? Can I really quickly try and polymorph him into a goldfish and run away? I... Probably not a good idea. Probably not. I would idea. allow it if you were really no, want to. Let's, no, let's, let's I, wait for, I think for this, Rain to be yeah, able to do her backstory. I just think yeah. it would be funny. She comes back, it's like, what did you do? It's like, well, we got your dad. I turned him into this goldfish, pulls him it's out. Like, <laughs> hands, hands, goldfish bowl. What the fuck? Oh, all right. Uh, so, especially since everyone was here, uh, especially, especially as well for sticking into the city, everyone's getting 500 XP. Yay. Uh, being able to remain hidden within and not immediately having to burn down the entirety of it. But yes, hopefully be able to carry this on immediately and see uh, Rain's reaction to her father just as deep in his cups as she is. Yay! Alcoholism! Generational it's trauma. It's a generational trauma. Oh, sorry for having to cut it off short. Uh, it's unfortunate we did lose. Uh, it more, happened. Rain just before the name, name Trump. I was like, oh shit. 
But, uh, yes, you are now in the middle of Shishipanik. Hell yeah. No pressure. Under the frying pan. It's not like we haven't been committing genocide wholesale on these guys or anything. Yeah, you know, just Whoa. an enemy of the, the state basically has been labeled upon your bounty board. Fine. Their state is our enemy as well, so. This is true. Which reminds me. Second Ashiki would probably have another 40 minutes left on her lifespan. Ah. Uh, second Ashiki. <laughs> Ashiko? Ashiko? <laughs> God damn. Yeah, you get inspiration for that. Fuck. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, adding it to the sheet. Oh, shit. All right, well, I guess we'll see how this plays that next time. Thanks for running, Josh. Thank you very much, Josh. Peace. And also... Yes, thank you so much, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, other peeps as well. Yes. Good RP is good stuff, y'all. So, uh, even if we want to immediately carry up with next week, I don't know if people are available or stick with the two weeks. Totally. Absolutely. I can, I I, I'm willing to try. Totally. Alright, so try for this coming Friday again to immediately carry over with uh, what the current circumstances. Is it 500 XP? Yes. Yeah. All right, kids, I'm going to bounce. Catch you later. Nice. Nice. Am I going to go back and play Minecraft? Possible. Uh, Probably for an hour, unless everyone wants to start early. Ah, yes. Oh, right. I have another game today. Yeah, boy. Yes, you do. I got oh, yeah, you. shit. OK. I'm kidnapping your man. Are you going to do work on your character for um, Sam's game? Well, I will still probably hang out. Ping me if they all want to start earlier, but I will be hanging out until midnight then. All right. Uh, well, I, I will hit you up in a short moment. Yes. Bye. 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 All right, Soros, I will be back momentarily, probably within an hour if we do not start early, because it would be midnight my time, a usual start time for the other. This one ended a touch early, but it's not bad. So uh, I will see you in an hour. If not, I hope you have a wonderful night. I apologize for not being able to respond right, right away. I hope you've been having an excellent night and a good day. There's definitely more D&D &D shenanigans to come fairly soon.